to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Lord, I don't just want to look, I really want to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just returned from a pastor's conference and um, yesterday was an awesome time. And while I taught in that conference, I felt a need to share some of the things that um, were communicated in that meeting because I believe that is very instrumental. It's, it's a teaching that will respond to our hunger and our desire for God. Hallelujah. Now, many of us at one point or the other have had questions as to why God seems to use certain individuals very mightily. When you look at any territory, you find out that there are certain individuals that... Um, it seems God is doing business with them as far as the dispensing of his life and power and truth. They seem to be pivot in what God is doing. And yet there are others who are Christians, believers, but they always seem to be out of God's program. It looks like they don't weigh so much as far as the agenda of God is concerned. And this has brought a lot of frustration in the body of Christ because a lot of people have gone into different kinds of spiritual exercises in an attempt to upgrade themselves to become usable. But then I think that the true ingredients required to carry the power of God to be relevant as far as the move of God is concerned many people do not seem to sustain it so i want to just talk on three things and then we'll pray hallelujah i've seen people pray for days and hours had vigils in an attempt to get the anointing in an attempt to gain spiritual power in an attempt to access the mysteries of the world and while that is not um it's not useless but then for many people, their disappointment is that at the end of all of that program, there is still a void and there is still a barrenness. Are we together now? So they fast. They add fasting to it. I mean, there is no time in the church where men fast and pray as it is right now. Are we together? There are ministries that literally do vigils every day. Every day. Marathon vigils for one month at a stretch yet you watch the quality of the believers that are produced from that experience and it's a cause for concern there are people who are i would call them fasting giants hallelujah and there are people who have stretched their human capacity from border to border i know a man who i prayed for who fasted for seven days dry dry fast i don't mean maybe you take juice later on and then you keep moving dry like nothing touches your mouth not even a toothbrush this is how people have stretched in the spirit in an attempt to be used by god the highest i've seen in my life is someone who fasted for 400 days 400 days non-stop hallelujah i rounded the 400 day with him and i prayed with him 
But as far as I know, that gentleman is still searching desperately for the power of God till now. What then is the missing link? Please pay attention to what I'm about to teach you because for some of you, this will be the key that God will hand to you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. The latest in the series of the pursuit right now is searching for the vessels that carry the anointing. I mean, once you are anointed, you are in trouble. Everywhere people see you, whether in the market, somewhere, I mean, there are all kinds of skills that are employed from those who fly and hold your leg and say, kill me, but let the anointing drop to those who will drop a seed, those who will use handkerchiefs to clean your shoes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against... Um, the expressions of their passion but i'm saying that people are desperate for the power of god and the glory of god but it looks like god is mising the power it looks like there are people who are saying lord empower me i mean give me this miracle working power this ability and 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 all of that i know so many pastors so many ministers who cry for the grace and the glory of God upon their lives. They want his presence to be experienced in their meetings. This that I'm about to teach you, the Lord taught me 10 years ago as the secret of his sustaining presence and power upon the life of a man. The Lord told me to do this and his presence and his power Will remain upon my life and by the grace of god i have followed this thoroughly i have struggled to teach what i'm teaching you people this night because i've taught us that it is wasteful to supply information to people who are not spiritually prepared to receive hallelujah while i saw the gentleman who came and said they came all the way from niger state and the ones from makodi I am very humbled to see what God is doing through these messages within this country and in various parts of the world. But there is a secret to it. This is what I want us to understand. There is nothing that is happening that is a mistake. There's nothing that is happening that is haphazard. And if you will pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please, even those who are working, workers and all of that, do your work, but please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. So why is the power of God absent? Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like, it, it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the Spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one. I, I, I consider this... I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man your motif and your motivation your motif and your motivation let me tell you something I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Be 
beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people, well-meaning people, who want to see the miraculous power of God, they want to be mightily used by God, lack this one thing. The motif and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning. So every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing. Are we together? From those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry. Those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming. And they console themselves by saying, let's go to the vineyard and use ministry to build a career. Corrupted motive. Are we together? To those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures. You were growing up and they told you that you will be a failure in life. And now you are saying, Lord, give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that I am not a failure. As well-meaning as that motif is, it is corrupted. Are we together now? that's the reason why you find certain people they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion fasting prayer but it seems like god has so much interest in them he will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life motive your motivation I can tell you this and I tell you sincerely eight or nine out of every ten pastors and men of God that call me send me text messages sow seeds and are desperately looking for anointing and grace most of them their motives are corrupted are we together so I can go for 40 days fasting but God looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive. This for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people that God does business with and that he will do business with in these days. Is God speaking to us? The state of your heart. Let's look at a few scriptures. John chapter 12. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, and Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus who had been dead who was raised from the dead and the Bible says there they made unto him supper and Martha served follow carefully but Lazarus was one of them that sat at table now let's watch something that happened and then Mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet the Bible says okay took a pound of ointment of spikenard pure nard very costly take note very costly then the bible says that she anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair are we together and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment 
And then something happened. Verse 4. And then one of his disciples, a man called Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, he responded to that act of worship. Verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now watch this. This is part of Jesus' ministerial cabinet. A woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet. Pure nerd. The Bible tells us it was her wages for one year and she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet. And then when other people, when Jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman, the sincere communication of her appreciation, someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage. Are we together? But he never said you wasted this. He tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house. Are we together? And this is what he said. Verse 5, please. Let's go back to verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold? So for him, you can still worship Jesus another way. Go and sell it. Bring the money. Let's add to the treasury. But his motive was so that he would have more money to be stealing. Are we together? It was never about Jesus. It was never about his desire to see his master exalted. Are we together now? Judas had no business. Listen, although he was a sincere person, he wanted to use Jesus. The moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry, he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself being elected the treasurer he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry he would help himself so you would see judas at every crusade you would see judas attending to the poor collecting all the seeds to jesus you would look from that experience and say what a zealous man the first to appear in every crusade ground. The one to respond to the necessity of Jesus. But the motive behind it was his belly. Are we together? The next verse, verse 6. This he said, not that he what? Cared for the poor. The Bible says, but because he was a... That was his mo the motive. He was looking for more money. So he could steal. So he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for God. The Bible says, and he had the back and bear what was put therein. In other words, if they changed Judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made Thomas or Peter the new treasurer, all of a sudden he would not care about any sacrifice again. Are we together? This is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people. You would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people. You would see them pray for prosperity as though they really, really want to help and bless people. You would see them fast as they, they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate. You would think they care so much about the people coming. But at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered, demonic, and many times satanic motivation. Are we together now? How many men of God use the anointing, use members, use so many people to boost their ego. And when they go around, you see pastors gather to talk and you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion. Have you seen my members? Have you seen the jeep that this one bought for me? There are 20 oil company workers in my church. There are senators in my church. There are this and that and that. I mean, we grew from 5,000 to 20,000 in one year. Great news. 
But then, what is the motivation behind it? And so we use those things to scorn others. We use those things to command honor. When pastors come together, the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by God. Motif. Motivation. Judas was doing what physically would have been a wise suggestion. I can understand his passion because he was in the finance department. Are we together? And so from financially speaking, it would have been a still a worthy way of worship to sell it and bring the money and then the money be given to the poor. But the problem was the motivation behind that statement. Not necessarily what he said. The motivation behind it was wrong. Brothers and sisters, you can fast all you can. You can pray all you can. You can carry bottles of anointing oil, carry handkerchiefs and mantles, go and fly on the man of God's bed and roll there from night till morning. When this adjustment of the state of your heart is not in place, forget about God doing business with you, especially in this end time. Are we together? Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2. Solomon, who was a wise man, said something that is very interesting. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 is projected. He said, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighed the spirit. Can we have any other version? Just any other available one that renders something differently. The Lord tests the motives. He judges the content, the motivation. It says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the Lord weighs the spirit the thoughts and the intents of the heart in other words if I get up right now and I tell this lady to stand up and I lay hands on her and she falls under the anointing while you are clapping and say man this guy is anointed God is not impressed with that experience until he scans the motive behind it. If the motive behind it was to prove a point to a few people that the anointing is still alive, that experience has been corrupted as far as God's standard is concerned. Are we together? You can raise 10 people from wheelchair and in heaven you raise only one. From the second to the last, the motive cancelled it by zero. Are we together now? Look, when you understand this, you will focus more on motive than physical experiences. Because it's difficult for men to discern. Because men judge by the outward appearance. How many pastors frustrate themselves? How many people frustrate themselves? They think they want power. They think they want grace. But God has already seen the true content of their heart. You will think when they are anointed, they will spend their lives serving God. You will think when they are anointed, they spend their lives. Listen, I go for meetings and thank God for the honor here and there. Different people have their ways of responding. And while I step into the meetings to sit down, I see all kinds of admiration. You see a lot of young people bouncing on the floor, happy and just wishing and say oh god give me what you have given this person and i can sense in my spirit the field of their motives they want to be celebrities and since they cannot run like you saying bolt since they cannot play tennis like the williams they feel ministry is a cheaper route to achieve the same thing and god says no sir no sir no sir anna wanted a child i've taught us she wanted a child so desperately but her motive was to prove to Penina that she also had a womb. And she kept going to Shiloh to pray and God never had it. Listen, this is very scary. A woman who wanted to prove, she went to the house of God and cried and God said, it's not enough reason for you to have a child. Until she gave up and said, Lord, this is not about Penina again. I align my will to you. She prayed once and a child came once once 
once. So many people want crowd. They want power. They want revelation. 80% of the text messages that people send to me, what is the secret of your anointing? What is the secret of your grace? What is this thing in these teachings that transform people? Let me tell you, it's beyond prayer. It's beyond fasting. The motif of your heart is greater. It's the foundation upon which any true spiritual experience is accepted before God. This already is a deliverance for somebody hearing me. Because it's, it's a call for you to find out. You have been engaging sincerely in many spiritual attempts. But you may never find the power of God until your motif, the state of your heart is aright. The sincerity and the love that you have for God and his people. The sincerity and the love that you have. How sincere is your motive? As far as God is concerned and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life. He does not stand on the sheep so that they will see him. A good shepherd is not one who prays in tongues. A good shepherd is not just one who walks in miracles. A good shepherd lays down his life, constrains himself, inconveniences himself for the success, the progress. How many pastors do that? How many pastors rejoice that God is lifting people? How many pastors rejoice? You see, when you understand this, you will at once, listen, at once. I remember one time, I think I was, I, I, I don't know where exactly, and we're sitting down and one pastor, I was talking with a group of pastors, and then somebody passed and then they tapped in and said, that's, that's apostle. The apostle Joshua Selman, you'll be hearing about, that's him. And he came around and sat down in less than 10 minutes. This man was telling me, oh, he bought his suit, so, so, so amount. God has been faithful in the ministry. They've been seeing all kinds of explosion. And later I asked the other person, I said, sorry, what is the membership strength of this church we're talking about here? And it was not even up to 35. Are we together now? So you see that this person came and was talking like this in hope to get honor and respect because he has been taught that when you try to create that picture and you package yourself, and make it look like, look, I'm an overseer. I'm not just a pastor. I need you to know that I'm overseeing something. You need to realize that there are people under me. There are pastors around. You say, oh, really? We see what God is doing. Please, let me advise you. Get out of those wrong and devilish associations. I'm telling you this. You may be criticized, but it's better to be criticized than do business with God. you never find me in a company of all this rubbish by the grace of God no I never look down on any man whether you are pastoring one church or two churches and I never give you any unnecessary honor whether you are pastoring one million people are we together now there are certain people here if God will give you one tenth of the anointing you are crying for God will have to summon prayer warriors to pray for your salvation, not even the church again, just to make sure that your salvation is protected. Are we together? So many people. We have seen many people. Let's use the music industry for instance. We have seen people who when they started, they, they ran around pastors pray for me give me anointing give me this and that and the moment god lifts them a little they change in a way that you will not imagine are we together now and you find out that their motivation is no longer the passion for god it is where honorarium will come where the paycheck is fattest is where the holy spirit is directing them are we together so if they give you a ministration in one small youth fellowship where there are 30 zealous youths 
genuinely hungry for God and they give you another invitation in Victoria Island where you are flying business class are we together now and a Range Rover Sports is what is receiving you from the airport to the hotel and you sit down and calculate say I've suffered in this life even God knows I've suffered in this life then you take all kinds of selfies and snapshots of yourself and send it and write on that God is faithful God is faithful yes but the motive behind that statement is corrupt what you are really saying is watch my life and be intimidated you are not saying you are just using a Christian term are we together motif I watch with pain in my heart because I know that God is still looking for men and women there is no man of God that can bring the revival we are talking about single-handedly the best of any man is an effective member God is looking for an army not a person if it looks like there is only one person is because many people are not ready it's not because God is mising his grace I tell you this so many people praying and crying use me oh God let me change my territory use me as an agent of revival all kinds of people trying to play all kinds of gimmicks to see the power of God come but when he searches their hearts he sees that their motives are not right how many ladies want to marry men of God you would think it's because they, are, they care about the burden of the vineyard you would think they love the man and say oh God let me live my life ministering to this man the way they talk you will be motivated you say you can imagine her passion have you eaten sir have you really eaten are you okay Huh? you have been losing weight these days are you okay but the truth of it is it's not any passion for any sheep is that the last time they checked their television and saw how mama looked mama of whichever ministry it was admirable people will come and kneel down before you and say mommy just speak a word and drop a check and they say if this is what mama represents I'm, I'm up for it I mean I, I take it with all gladness and gratitude so it makes the sister to always establish her presence in the prayer meeting. When there is Bible study, the sister is there. Are we together? When there is any fasting program, she's there. She comes fasting but holds cooler for the pastor. Now, there's nothing wrong with cooler ministry. It's very useful. Uh, come on, very, very useful. Are we together? So that I don't make ladies punish a lot of pastors from... Do what God has asked you to do to the man of God. Are we together? When food finished for Elijah, when Elijah's food finished and water dried, God sent him immediately to a woman to take care of him. So that ministry is very biblical. Are we together? Motivation. How many people in church are looking for ordination and PA? So, and they are the first to come and greet the pastor in the morning pastor how are you I want to tell you what is happening in this church it's like you have been very busy but I've been covering for you I can, I can tell you exactly what has been happening the last time you went there is a stubborn lady in the worship team I don't know exactly it's not happening here I can tell you at least not, not to this level praise the Lord so I can give this example generally speaking and then once you talk you now say pastor uh, there's a message that I prepared anytime you are not free you are busy I can always stand in for you at the conference or the crusade you will look at this guy and believe that he's very zealous the pastor will say I really have someone covering my back but it's because this person went and met his uncle and the uncle said the job is not coming and he sat down and calculated and said which one is the fastest route to establishment masters phd i can start up a business it will take five years before it will be established but if i partner with this man i'm sure that in six months god will wipe my tears so he comes 
and you will find unusual passion. Are we together? Motive. Whenever you see a man who is very close to the anointing and never receives it, his motive stopped him from receiving. That's what happened to Gehazi. By the grace of God, when you see the heads of departments of this ministry and many people and other people who are connected to this ministry, when you look at the life of those who are connected in reality, you, even those who have never seen my face, you will see a reproduction of grace. I have met people in meetings. I sat down and I thought I was hearing myself. I was like, my goodness, who is this guy? But there are others who are around the anointing. Around, but their motive. Oh, look, let me tell you something about God. He is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. Hallelujah. Elisha worked with Elijah for a very long time. He would have been, I mean, um, um, Gehazi. He would have been prophet Gehazi. But you can see his motive. One time Naaman came and when Naaman was healed, Elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go. And Naaman, like Judas, you see it now. Naaman said, we can't let this thing just go like that. And he ran after him and said, wait, my master just changed his mind. Can you offload some of these things? I will handle it. And when he came back, he just kept quiet like nothing happened. And Elisha looked at him and said, was my spirit not with you? Sometimes members in church are really foolish. If a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage, and see what is happening in the lives of people. What makes you believe he cannot discern your motive? Are we together? When I talk to pastors and I counsel them and they bring me problems, maybe them, assistants, um, other people around are fighting, I look at them and I say, come on now. Are you not anointed? Where did you keep the anointing? Do you drop it just at the altar? Can you not discern? Everyone say motive. Say it again, motive. Your motive and your motivation. Sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ. Sincerity. Sincerity of motive. Is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives. Sincerity of motive. Our motives are perverted. Our motives are corrupted. I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one. When he told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one, I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes. He thought it was a testimony. I said, I can't understand. What are you saying? He said, truly. He was in a program. He happened to be like a PA or some, not PA, but you know, those who are, see, please, if you are close to a man of God, go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity you can be the closer you are to a man of god the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in are we together now motive motive i never get too familiar with the holy spirit I love him. The Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me. But at every point, I make sure that that sense of honor, that my motive is always aright. When I'm praying for a meeting, oh Lord, I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting. He sees my heart and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name. I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time 
listen and i'm talking to all of us especially for those who are pastors when was the last time your motive was aright? you see why david was called a man after god's heart david would say search my heart not search my throne search my heart try my thoughts because my heart can be deceitful so many people have missed out on the will of God that's the reason why you find out that in many churches after a while people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative when you call somebody and say promise go and work in welfare Ken work in prayer department mama work in ushering mama says ushering it's me now that you are giving ushering this guy is in prayer department. At least the honorarium, there's a possibility of honorarium coming. Welfare, there's no possibility of any honorarium coming. Are we together? Have you seen people lobby for positions in church? You've seen that happen? This is the reason. They find, you know how a funnel is. When you pour water, the funnel moves in a direction. And so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing and they leech themselves around that place and God sees their hearts says your motif is corrupted I like you to in a very sincere way listen cry out and ask the Lord to search your motif for desiring his presence for desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make my heart your home Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know yeah search me through and through till my heart becomes when was the last time you listen to a man of God, his prayer content, and you heard him praying and crying for the sheep. Oh God, bless these people. Oh God, increase them. If it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me live. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motif and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy and you see the desire you see the desire you i mean you see the hunger every time they say a man of god is coming to town you see so many people they go and sit in front you would think they want the anointing for a clean motive sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors I told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep it shows that you don't care about them every time I come in for koinonia and I see crowds of people and I see people standing 
if I see just one person standing, I can feel it in my heart. Sometimes I'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say, look, we are doing our best. There is only so much we can do. I, I feel as though I should stand and let the people, I, I just would not interrupt the work of the various departments, but I see it. Especially when we are done and I see people leaving and where we are going and I see some people trekking in groups happily through the night, my heart is moved. Listen, compassion is a big key to working in the anointing. Compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people. It's the secret to the anointing. Are we together? If Sam is sick right now, and I come to Sam, and I lay hands on Sam, and Sam is not healed. I lay hands on Sam, and Sam is not healed. I will carry Sam by myself to Shika. Because I am so interested in his healing my ego, notwithstanding. But a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave Sam to die. Are we together? So that it will be through his hand. How many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church? Are, are we together? How many people will dare not give a testimony about what God used another man of God to do in their life? before the overseer he says so you are trying to say i'm not anointed now honor your man of god respect him don't come and cause trouble between pastors but at the same time any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors that's the truth about it but it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth the pastor will note in fact it's not even the pastor there is already a system to punish this loyalty are we together motif motif and some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now. The moment somebody comes and says, wow, God bless me with this revelation and it did not come from you. All of a sudden you start looking and say, oh, I wish sure is correct. Let me see it. Motive. If what you want is celebration and being a celebrity, if that is your prime, if you just want celebrity, please go and act for if you want the anointing if you want to serve God genuinely your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture I worship you great I am you are mighty in this place I worship you, King of Kings. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. I lift my hands. As I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motive. I say it again. Align your motive for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motive for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motive. align your motif motif is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people what is the state of your heart I know you are well meaning 
but what is the state of your heart sister it's not like God cannot give you a great man of God to marry but what is the motive behind your heart if the motive of your heart is to serve God and to stand by that man to be a blessing to partner with him to lift up the banner of Christ in the nations I guarantee you God will not withhold it from you but if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around and look like you are more than other ladies and so Ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it I will help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because God is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God he gave the blood of his very son for it and so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this I want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. I began to pray recently and I was asking the Lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of Christ don't last and the Lord showed me something that scared me I want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us. Please open your eyes and let me teach you something. Watch this. If I'm holding money, so I have your attention now. Come, sir. Watch this. If Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area, are we together now? And then he comes to meet me as a man of God. And I tell him, Michael, give me 1,000 naira and I will pray for you. And I will sow a seed. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you just cancel that spiritual transaction. Anointing will never, has never been an instrument in exchange for money. Are we together now? I can bless him. Listen, let me tell you why many people, especially many young pastors and young prophets, are fraud. Their, their lives look like they are fake. Some of them are not fake. The truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of God. No, sir. It's God speaking to us. I can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life he can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book a pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project that's all right but where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft if you are doing it here stop it now let me tell you now stop it not later now stop it between you and god let it never happen you will never see the power of god that way remember in the book of acts the gentleman who wanted to buy power from peter and he said your money perish with you pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit i know we need money ministries need money don't get me wrong i know i know that pastors need money they have families but not to compromise with the anointing the anointing will bring you money big time people will surprise you but it's not going to be this way are we together all those things where you carry offering basket and as i heal you you drop your own whether you call it free will or whatever if it came in demand for the anointing brothers and sisters if you ever saw result it was the mercy of God not a justification of what happened this is one thing that I've seen that is eating people in the church you do not use the anointing for merchandise no you will be blessed you will be changed look let me tell you bless people and allow them to decide to honor you they will surprise you 
how much can I charge you for a breakthrough? How much can I charge you for miracles? Let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you, I ask you to pay me 10,000, 20,000. Let's even assume that I ask you to pay me 50,000 and you bring it. I have received wages, not favor, wages. But by the time I bless you and I leave you to the God that sent me, he himself will move you and you will come with one million naira, ten times what I would have demanded and you will bless me. It's impossible to be a true servant of God and bless people without God moving them to bless you. It's no, it never happens. If nobody is blessing you, it's because your anointing is not notable enough. Are we together? This is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry. Because it seems like it's working. Someone gets into ministry and in four months, he has ten jeeps. He raised offering for himself. And ten people gave. And there are rich people. You see, people are desperate. So whatever I said, I beg, please take the jeep and heal me. I'm tired of all this trouble. But God is watching. And you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels. And God says, I can't take you international with this attitude. You will misrepresent me. Your motif is corrupted. There have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry. Especially seeds of kinds. And when they bring it, because I never use them. But I just bless them and we release it. Sometimes we give it to people. Sometimes we honor the workers with it. I look at it when I see maybe especially gadgets or some things and I find out that it's very expensive and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever I'm even moved and I say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but I have not once not twice I've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and I pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us, your hand is in a mode to collect consistently. It doesn't matter how it comes. No. That's not the way God blesses people in the kingdom. Is God helping us to examine motives? Motives. How many pastors have troubled rich men in their church? visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing. The anointing is provoked, yes. But it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power anytime listen it's not even every giving that is worth collecting when you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright you honorably decline there are people who give you in such a way that the day you as you collect it you throw away your honor preserve the how much is 10 naira how much is 20 naira tea and bread and you lose everything because of it Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing. I hate the way we talk about money all the time in church. It, it can, I mean, have you seen men of God who preach a very solid message? Solid message. And when the spirit of the people are lifted, it, it just now coins, it says in conclusion, there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story. 
because this story would demand a, a response there was a man and then so on and so forth and they tell you all the story and at the end of it the man now says a b c d e f g all of that and um you i'm going to bless you stand here with five thousand not if god is leading you or if you are led to sow ten thousand you you are a rich man you can't bring five thousand for me stand here with ten thousand and the moment you start doing that you may not be fake but you are driving the, fi the, fi the fire of God from your life. And if you don't take time, it will become Ichabod, the departure of the glory. That's why certain men of God, eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be sincere and to be true I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motive how many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others they are tired though but because they saw another colleague they fire on on a very good day they would have rested if the person is not there i've seen people who pray and they are sleeping once they hear the door they just stop Shut. to mean you should come and see me in the look, look 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 don't play games with the anointing you must be true if you want the power of god number two you want to carry the glory of god upon your life your level of passion and hunger for God. Your level of passion and hunger. There's a song in my spirit. She's your mentor now. Come and sing it if you know. Spirit lead me where my truth. Let me walk upon the waters you, you know the song? Take me deeper, That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit lead me where my in our borders, let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet will ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Take me deep your level of passion and hunger brothers and sisters seeking god is a full-time pursuit there's nothing like part-time seeking god are we together no you don't seek god part-time you don't seek god with your spare time sorry you don't seek god with the remaining time you have after you make money after you marry after you give birth to children the balance of it you now say oh yeah god take no 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 the jealousy of god fights anything that is above him even if it's what he gave you he will still fight it listen god can give you a thing that he will still fight it tomorrow the moment it rises above him his jealousy begins to fight it immediately 
when the Bible says God is a jealous God take that word very seriously your passion Psalm 42 verse 2 listen pursuit is the proof of passion pursuit is the proof of passion every time you have passion towards anything you will seek it and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for god my soul thirsted for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god this is the psalmist a psalm communicating passion are we together if this is my wife if this is my wife watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place I should run and give her a big hug and say sweetheart i missed you how are you just me what has happened passion if a call is coming i ignore the call because i'm trying to communicate passion if you must be prompted to love god and to seek god it's because you are not passionate enough anything you are passionate about you have time for it my brother that's why this night after koinonia as late as it is you are still going to escort the lady to her room the reason is because you have passion are we together there are brothers after koinonia right now they will even enter bus there is a fire they themselves cannot explain they say let's go what is boss is it will kill the time we have for our discussion and the lady stands brothers and sisters from here to north gate will look like five minutes and they say we're even here that's passion but let let me tell you to escort somebody you don't have a man let me ask you to escort your colleague by the time you get to that shop you say are you biking or we are walking because you love the person jesus brotherly love but there is no passion that fire is not there have you seen a lady 12 30 the guy is shaking and he says let me try flashing her he flashes once and she pities say, i'm sorry let me start by apologizing say for what Say, I, you, you sound sleepy. Say, I was just stretching. But the truth is, she was sleeping. Everybody say, passion. Say, fire. That's the name of that experience. If you don't have that thing, listen, listen. If as you are sitting down right now, this is not your feeling for God, you need a retreat. I'm telling you the truth. It's a sign. Don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream. You need a retreat very quick. That's what it takes there must be an obsession that's the word really if you are not yet obsessed about God forget about his power in your life it must be an obsession and by the way let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling if you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere careless easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses watch how people act and treat football man you is about to play match 3 30 by 2 o'clock the person is there with singlet already arguing are we together arguing one hour before the time and then they sit down in the place of argument and they say if you did not start watching football from 1993 don't join us because you don't even know what it, we need somebody with a historical perspective and they are arguing and the person is mentioned it's called passion the moment the match starts the person is in front sweating but remaining there 
thirsty but remaining there are we together a point comes there are guys there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say i'm not going out this sweat we will die here with this sweat i must watch this match it's called passion now come to the house of god and see the coldness the coldness the coldness when an average believer tries to show that i'm a little serious with god we just say pastor are we together or mama it's a shame Bless you. it's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about god until your love for god makes someone around you uncomfortable you don't love god enough yet that someone can look at you and say Kai, oh, well, carry your madness and leave my presence every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in are we together less as fair lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life there is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit I'm chasing after you, no matter what. You know the song? I will keep bringing songs that I, my spirit, I don't know the song so much, but if you can help me, any one of you, if you don't know it. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more, more and more. More, more and more, more and more, more and more. It's important. To what degree do you seek Him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what He has done to me. But I pray he will do it to you. Amen. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No. Anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some... No! No! Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heart beat for God. More and more. 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 Psalm 69 verse 9 let me show you something very powerful there is a term I've seen in the Bible but I've hardly studied it hardly studied it but I studied it recently and I was amazed everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9 want to read for the zeal of thine house had eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me listen let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to him that they can see. So the anger they have for him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love him. hallelujah are we together it says the zeal this was a prophecy about jesus christ the zeal of thy house has consumed me the zeal of thy house that a man can be so consumed with the things of god it has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not zeal the zeal of the lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly listen listen 
when was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again because you are thinking about the kingdom you are thinking about his majesty something about him now you have me and I'm forever changed I've abandoned everything I've ever known now I surrender my life is not mine you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you you are the first the last beginning and the end in you i live and have my being There is absolutely nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing compares to you. I don't know the other part, but you are everything. You are everything. everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Sing it to him from your heart. He is everything. He is everything. everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money, until you love him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17, when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple, they remembered that the zeal of the Lord, zeal is like an anointing. It will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go. Zeal. The same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says, sorry, why are you here? He says, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for grace. He says, is he compulsory? It's late. He says, please. If you will not support my agenda, leave this place. Because the rain is not in. Say, what is rain? Am I sick? It's called zeal. If you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know? Every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally, as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed. I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia, but the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you. That it will make you passionate so that when you get a job you will not leave him are we together so that when you marry you will not leave him so that when you no longer have prayer points do you know it is possible god will solve your problem there is no personal prayer point what then will you do when he solved everything the reason why many people are drawing after him i'm telling you this sincerely is because of the load of problems they have If God solves all your problems, will you still seek him? If, there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love him? I can understand why you love him because you need him for your defense next week. You need him for graduation. You are trusting he will manipulate the results in a way that you will leave it be in peace. So I can understand your zeal. 
But what happens? Listen, you always know those who never had zeal for God by their commitment after God meets their needs. Not before he meets it. After. When a lady is looking for a husband desperately, I can understand why you are around for night vigil. But what if a husband comes and a rich one and then one month after your marriage you are pregnant every testimony you want has been given and to hell with God until another problem comes Shade is here with her kids raising them she's been like this for many years in this ministry way before marriage raising her kids her son is very interesting he can mimic me almost verbatim this boy you are seeing take it or this and that and in his own little way but he's growing some of us it took the grace of God to drag you back to the house of God the money you got before has finished so you came you, you came in the name of thanksgiving but the truth is you are only thanking God because you are aware that in the next two weeks whether you thank him or not there's going to be a problem and so you have come to the house of God I love him whether he answers my prayer or not I love him whether he ever anoints me or not koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God the results in my life are too small a reason fall in love with him to that extent I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again falling in love with you falling in love with you Psalm 63, verse 1 and 3. Fall in love with him, and you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways. Fall in love with him genuinely, beyond the need for things. Give me tea, give me bread. Fall in love with him genuinely. And I'm telling you, you will see God answer your thoughts before they become prayer points. Psalm 63. Oh God, thou art my God, not our God, my God. Early, early, I'm so passionate about you. When I wake up, you are my obsession. And so I seek you early. My soul thirst for thee my body my flesh longs after you do you know lust is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards god lust lust what you call lust immorality lust is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner but because the person is standing where God is. So you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. And say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. 
most times when I go back after koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. God does not want an affair. Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. Desire and I long to worship you. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. I want to talk about the third point but the Holy Spirit is stopping me because these points that I've said enough God wants to do something in our midst this thing has pleased the Lord this thing I have taught I know when the Lord is pleased over something would you just pray and just pray in the spirit this is well pleasing to the Lord tonight it's an incense of worship it's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh, oh lover of my soul, yeah, to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh lover? To the sound of all songs, would you dance with me? You're the lover of my soul. To the sound of all songs, just the voices. Would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Oh, he can make your ministry powerful, I tell you. Would you dance with me, oh, lover? Would 
a job I seek his presence as a full time assignment let me tell you the secret of power beyond your fasting and your prayer have a genuine motif no matter how wrong you are let your motive be true no matter what you don't know let your motive be true your motive is greater than your actions your motives are stronger than your actions and then seek him seek him you will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love. Listen, listen, listen. If these two kids are my children, by the time I'm done, you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with Apostle. All they know is Father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after Koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. They just pass you and rush to come and hug me. They are coming to hug their father. They have no business with whether, whatever. To them it's not a puzzle. To them it's someone they love. Take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come past the place where prayer warriors stop past the place where fasting giants stop past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber is a place where only lovers enter even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber even fasting giants don't enter the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard and it does not occur in the heart of any man what god has in store for them that love him them that are obsessed listen you will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring result. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together the apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy being naked and unashamed are we together if you do not get to that point where you can be open to god and naked and unashamed there is deceit somewhere in your relationship if i'm going out with you and i password some messages in my phone and I'm afraid of you accessing it. Listen, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together? Genuine passion. 
we are going to pray. God is going to visit us very briefly. But we are going to pray. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Wait, Lord, give me you. Relationship can wait, jobs can wait, anointing can wait. Give me you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the next five to ten minutes, there will be a very strange impartation in this place. This is why the Lord stopped me. And listen, aside from several activations that will happen, one of the major impartations that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways. Listen, listen. Many of you, what will happen to you tonight, it will become as if you have become a madman. Something will come upon you. Something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions, proportions that you have never seen. It's a dimension of love. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you Falling in love with you Again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you Again and again Falling in love with you, I keep falling in love with you, falling in love with you. One more time, yeah, I keep falling in love with you. more than ministry, more than the desire for power, more than the desire for fame and greatness. Lift your hands. I tell you, something mighty will happen to you. The zeal of the Lord. 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 Ta 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 ta. The zeal of the Lord will consume you. It will eat you up like a cancer. As I begin to sing, 
it will be like an impartation from my left to my right and outside it's like an initiation to a realm of love and now pray for you go ahead oh great one and bring your seal upon people and I, yeah. Yeah. And I, Father, I pray, let a strange anointing fall upon your people. At the count of three, there will be mighty impartation, love for God. It will come heavy upon you. One, two, three, take it now. Take it now. Take it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Everywhere in this place, take it right now. Fire is a fire. And a seal for God is a fire and a seal for God. A fire, a passion for the house of God, a passion for the things of God. Just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. ask him Lord let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me
lift your hands. Lift your hands. I hear my spirit visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. A mantle for visions and dreams. Prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place. Lord, right now, where are those people? Let that mantle fall upon them. Visions and dreams. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Visions and dreams. You will hear his voice in the night. Visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing my spirit spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion in lives and mysteries. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle. Like an anointing. That gives precision. As many people. Who are supposed to walk in this. Wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. Visit them right now. 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 Zion scheme, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion scheme, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 When your motive is right and true and when you seek him with your all like the deer pants after the water brook, unashamedly unembarrassingly then the stage is clear for you to catch true fire then the stage is clear for you to carry a mantle that no man can deny I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about Yes, it's all about you. It's, it's all, all about, about you. you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want those who came visiting to come out. I want to minister to them. Those who came visiting, specifically from maybe other places, pastors and all of that. 
I usually don't do this. I want you to stand with your heart hungry and desperate. Hungry and genuinely desperate to go back with an encounter. You will carry something heavy, believe me. You will carry a strange order of grace. Help them. You will carry something mighty that you will take back to your regions. Strange levels of fire and anointing, deep fountains of encounters. Your majesty, be your sea. Stretch your hands towards them as I lay my hands on them. Father, let something come upon our visitors in the name of Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands on you, something mighty comes upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it and go with it. Take it and go with it. this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. Not just the healing anointing but a teaching anointing. I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A strange fire for revelation. There is one of the ladies that I ministered to here. Um, there is a strong prophetic anointing that is coming upon her. The Lord will identify her by herself just among you people standing here. The power of God will come upon that person is in, in a mighty way. It's one of the ladies here. It's a strong prophetic unction. I don't know exactly who that person is, but I will minister to you. Lord, identify the lady, whoever that lady is. Let this strong prophetic unction come upon such a one. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is deliverance happening to two people, two people in the congregation. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. I see deliverance happening to two people. I curse that spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release all of you to go and do mighty things. You came all the way. You will go back. 
like Saul went back when he encountered Samuel many of you will go back and step into strange levels of grace strange dimensions of the hand of God all the people God has put under your care and under your watch go back and raise them to become mighty men go and reproduce the experience you see in this ministry in your various groups and churches and fellowships in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you those who can go can go back those under the anointing you just leave them hallelujah there are people here who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ you were probably invited you are yet to make up your mind for Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I've just been interrupted by the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing in this room. I don't know what it is about this room, but it looks like there are a few people God is touching in this room. This room, I see the Lord touching people right in this area, right down to the back i'm not not just in front here lord i don't know who you are touching but i stretch my hands and i direct the anointing to whoever should receive that touch all through this role right now in the name of jesus christ let no one oh god escape this touch of god right to the back right to the back whoever should receive that touch in the name of jesus christ lord they receive that touch supernatural touch supernatural touch supernatural touch right to the back right to the back in the name that is above all names now you are here just keep praying in tongues as you people are standing close to her don't worry about the reaction she's a very nice lady it's a demonic spirit this is god is working deliverance in her. there are people here who have not made up their minds they've not given their hearts to Jesus Christ wherever you are the greatest decision is to surrender to Jesus there are others who at one time have given their hearts to the Lord but the truth is things happen in your life and you went back as I sing the song my one desire is that you be praised please wherever you are those who are returning and those who are making that decision I know that there are a number of you outside please do not reject his voice in the day that you hear him he calls you for your good hallelujah right now begin to make your way to the front let's celebrate them as they come don't wait for anybody god bless you as you come god bless you as you come i'm making my ways right with jesus god bless you god bless you don't wait for anyone god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are still people coming outside god bless you the devil is a liar he will not stop you tonight god bless you god bless you come come koinonia keep celebrating them we welcome you to the kingdom it doesn't matter how you have lived your life it doesn't matter what you have done jesus calls you tonight jesus calls you tonight he can give you a new beginning he can change your life he can give you a new beginning you can start afresh again keep coming god bless you celebrate them as they come there are still people coming from outside god bless you god bless you don't let your friends stop you don't let anyone stop you hallelujah i congratulate all of you for coming to make this decision for jesus everyone at one point made this genuine decision realize that you are not just reciting a poem this is a true decision i don't care how it has been before now i want you to know that he can give your life a new beginning some of you are rededicating your lives some of you are coming for the first time and you're saying lord it's all over I'm, I'm tired of living my life my way listen let me tell you as you pray this prayer from the depth of your heart the power of sin will be broken over your life lift your right hand genuinely and passionately to the god of your salvation please don't just say it because you are emotional. Let it be true. Some of you, as you are praying it, you will literally feel something leaving you. The power of sin. Say after me, Lord Jesus. 
Say it again, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart and I come before you this night with all my heart. I surrender. I accept Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. And I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life. I declare in the name of Jesus that eternal life comes into my spirit. From today, I am saved. I'm a new person in the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Something will happen to you as I pray for you. I break the power of sin over your life. I break every habit and every challenge from the pit of hell that attempts to destroy you. I command that devil to leave your life and never return. In the name of Jesus Christ, beginning from today is a new story for you. You keep rising from glory to glory. I, I kill away from your life any appetite for ungodliness. And I pray that you will find a new love and a new passion for God. We declare you born again. We declare you saved in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you for this noble decision. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll welcome you on our behalf and they'll give you some details. We'll follow you up. Thank you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.